Welcome. In this film, we'll examine the anatomy of the eye. Illustrated transcripts are available on Kansas State University's Gen Ag 711 course website and through a link provided on our YouTube channel. Let's begin our discussion by considering the eye's most visible structures. The white of the eye is known as the sclera. The word sclera is based on a Greek root meaning hard. The sclera is a tough, fibrous layer that protects and supports the eyeball. The pupil is the dark, central window into the interior of the eye. Images we see result from light that enters the eye through the pupil. The iris is the colored ring around the pupil. Muscles in the iris change the size of the pupil opening, making the pupil larger in dim light and smaller in bright light. The conjunctiva is a transparent layer of tissue that covers the eyes and inside of the eyelids. The conjunctiva produces mucus that helps protect and lubricate the eyes and lids. The conjunctiva contains blood vessels, but these may be barely noticeable when the conjunctiva is healthy and not irritated. Conjunctivitis is an inflammation of the conjunctiva. Inflammation may be caused by allergies, microbial infection, or irritation from chemicals and other substances. Conjunctivitis makes the eyes and lids appear red. The eyelids and lashes help protect the eyes. The blink reflex closes the eyelids when hazards are perceived in the environment. For instance, the blink reflex can be triggered when anything touches the lashes. The blink reflex can also be triggered by sudden movement in front of the eyes. Tears from the lacrimal gland help lubricate and wash debris from the surface of the eyes. When we blink, tears are spread over the eyeball. After coating the eyes, tears and mucus flow toward tiny canals in the eyelids. The canals lead to the lacrimal sacs, which drain mucus and tears into the nose. This is why we often have to blow our noses when our eyes water. This is a simplified cross-section of the eyeball looking down from above. Again, the conjunctiva is the outermost protective surface. Just beneath the conjunctiva lies the tough sclera or white of the eye. In front of the eye, positioned over the iris and pupil, is a clear, transparent bulge called the cornea. The cornea has no blood vessels, so it draws its nourishment from a clear fluid that is produced in the eye. That clear, nourishing fluid is called aqueous humor, and it is located in the anterior chamber a cavity directly behind the cornea. Aqueous humor provides oxygen and nutrients to structures near the front of the eye. Aqueous humor is produced by the ciliary body, which encircles the iris. Further back, just behind the iris, is a structure called the lens. Like the cornea, the lens is transparent with no blood supply of its own. It is nourished by the aqueous humor. 
The lens is connected to the ciliary body by strong fibers. The muscles of the ciliary body change the shape of the lens to help the eye focus on objects that are closer than about 20 feet. When we are engaged in close work, we may experience eye fatigue due to tired ciliary muscles. The interior of the eye is filled with a transparent fluid having a consistency similar to that of raw egg white. This fluid is called vitreous humor and the interior of the eye is called the vitreous chamber or vitreous body. Debris can accumulate in the vitreous humor and may be visible as distortions or ghostly shadows called floaters. The eye's blood supply enters and leaves from the rear. The optic nerve is also located in the rear of the eyeball. The optic nerve carries impulses from the eye to the brain where those impulses are then interpreted as visual images. The retina is the inside surface of the back of the eyeball. When light enters the front of the eye, it passes through the eyeball and strikes the retina, a thin membrane containing many structures. Light then enters the retina itself where nerve cells called photoreceptors are located. One category of photoreceptors consists of rods. Rods are cells that are highly sensitive to light of many wavelengths. Incoming light triggers the rods to send signals to the brain. Basically, the rods allow us to see in black, white, and shades of gray. Because the rods are very sensitive, they also help us see in dim light. Cones are photoreceptor cells that allow us to see colors. The cones are less sensitive than rods, so good lighting is required for color vision. There are three different types of cones, and each of the three types is most sensitive to light of a different wavelength. Let's get back to our cross-section of the entire eye. Remember that the retina is in the rear of the eye. Toward the center of the retina, there is a small indentation or pit called the fovea. The fovea lies within the macula, which is a small area of the retina that is crowded with cone cells. Because cone cells are densely packed here, we experience our sharpest vision and our best color perception when relatively bright light strikes the macula and especially when light strikes the central foveal pit. Because the macula covers only a small area of the retina, we must look directly at an object to experience sharp vision and good color perception. The peripheral areas of the retina are less densely packed with photoreceptors and most of those receptors are rods. Close to the macula, is a spot that is devoid of rods and cones where the optic nerve enters the eye. This is an area called the optic disc or blind spot. For the eye to resolve fine details, light rays must be properly focused on the retina. Let's imagine we are outdoors looking at a tree that is far away. Light from the sun is reflected off the tree. If we face the tree, that reflected light travels toward our eye. Incoming light first passes through the cornea 
the clear bulge at the front of the eye. The cornea bends incoming light rays to help focus the image. The lens further changes the direction of the light rays to improve the focus. The focused light then strikes the retina. If we are looking directly at the tree, its image will fall on the fovea, where the cones are densely packed. If the visual system is healthy and has no defects, we will see the image clearly. Let's review what we've covered in this film. The visible white portion of the eye is known as the sclera. The sclera consists of tough, fibrous material that helps the eyeball hold its shape. The pupil is the opening that lets light enter the eye. The iris is the colored ring that encircles the pupil. The iris adjusts the size of the pupil to regulate the amount of light that enters the eyeball. The conjunctiva is the transparent layer of tissue that covers the eye and the inside of the eyelids. When the conjunctiva becomes inflamed, the condition is called conjunctivitis. The blink reflex is triggered when objects move suddenly in front of the eye or when objects touch the eyelashes. Tears produced by the lacrimal glands lubricate and wash the eyes. Tears drain into the nose through the lacrimal sac. The cornea and lens bend light rays to focus images on the retina. When light strikes the retina, photoreceptors generate nerve impulses which are sent to the brain to be interpreted as visual images. The photoreceptors in the retina include rods and cones. Rods are very sensitive to many wavelengths of light. Cones are less sensitive and help us see in color. The macula is a small area in the center of the visual field that is crowded with cones. The fovea is a tiny pit in the macula where cones are even more densely packed. In contrast, peripheral areas of the retina contain rods but not many cones. The optic disc is a blind spot where the optic nerve enters the eyeball. The blind spot contains no photoreceptors. Finally, the optic nerve carries impulses from photoreceptors in the retina to the brain for interpretation. This concludes our video on the anatomy of the eye. In other videos, we'll visit more about how the structures of the eye function to help us see clearly in differing environmental conditions.